Hello, this is Terry from Fabric Junction and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful quilt that we named Pick Nick. It is done in five beautiful colors with a background and the pattern comes in five different sizes. So the one I have hanging here is our throw size. And what I'd like to show you today is a couple of old techniques that I know you're familiar with and a new one. And as Chris shows you the beautiful quilt, we'll move down to where I have the block in sections. So we know uh, one of the first things we have to do is we have to do our half square triangle. And we're going to use the technique where we mark it with your marking tool and we're going to stitch on those lines. So I'll do that first. So down one side, back up the other, and if I was doing several blocks, once again, I would I got a phone phone ringing in the background. Anyway, once again, I would do all of them at the same time. There we go. This very quickly took care of the phone. We've got our stitching. We're going to separate them. And I'm going to press to the dark. And remember, we always press either to the dark or the less bulky, whichever one works the best. Get rid of our dog ears. And place it in our quilt the right direction. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to show you is another technique on making half square triangles. And because I had so many small ones in this technique, I used one that's called thangle. And with a thangle, the nice thing is, is you cut a strip. You'll have a paper, and it'll say the finished size on here, 1.5. So these are going to make one and a half inch half square triangles tells you you're going to cut a two inch strip, put your right sides together, take your strip, place it on there, and then I use a couple of pins to keep it from moving or shifting. Get it to lay just right, there we go. Then the next thing you're going to do, well, before I have you do it, let, I'll let you know, if you see th this individual, they look rectangular. Trust me, they'll come out square, so don't let that rectangular look deceive you. But our next thing then is we're going to stitch on the dotted line. The solid lines are for cutting. For the sewing part, you can create whatever technique you want to use as far as doing several at a time, turning like I did, or maybe going one direction the whole time. It's kind of what is comfortable for you. The important thing is, is to sew on your, I got a little shift there, there we go, is to sew on the dotted line. There we go. Okay. 
Once you have them sewn, remove your pins. You don't need those in the way. Get a straight edge. And you can scissor cut them if you would like. I tend to use my rotary. Line up on the lines. direction. Now we'll do the diagonal line. This works out really, really fast. When I was making the quilt, I would do a whole bunch of these at one time. Then I would go and cut them all. Then I'd find a com comfortable place and sit down and take the paper off. And it doesn't take that long to remove the paper. And I'll show you what I do. I take and I fold. I do a little press on it. I reach in the middle and pull it up. And that way it doesn't take my threads loose on either end. So I go through the whole stack as I'm sitting. And the next thing, I have all of my half square triangles taken care of. Because this quilt takes a lot of them. So I generally have a garbage right in front of me and I throw these directly into my garbage pail as I'm doing it. Okay, one more and I'll have my whole group done. There we go. Again, I'm going to press to the dark. And then on these, you only have one little dog ear to take care of. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I know I only need two of them. Uh, let me see. Do I need any of them? Did I? I finished along as far, so the next step then is actually getting your half square triangles in the right order. So you go through and follow the pattern because you'll end up doing kind of mirror images. You'll need um, two that go towards your, your dark piece like I have here. So you would sew them together. You would have them like this, flip it over, sew it together, open it up so that it creates that. And you would do two of them in that fashion for the outer sections of your block. And as you can see, then you're going to add a solid square. So we'll make the assumption we've already done that, but we need to finish out our run. And this is how you do it which matches the one on the side. It um, same as what you're going to do over here for the dark sections. And what I did here is on this on yes bleh, on the sides I matched up so you created this look. This is the look you're going for. Here's the side you're going to stitch. Okay? So we will stitch that together, slide it up there until your needle is going to touch the fabric so that way that point doesn't get stuck down into your machine. And you know you have it right when you actually come off basically where those two inter that interchange is. This time I do press to the light. You have it pressed. We're going to match it up. Open it up. I'm going to get rid of this one dog ear because he's going to be in my way. The other one I leave, and I'll show you why I leave him temporarily because I need him as a guide. 
So to the other side. Quick press. We've done the same thing to the other side on this one. The only difference is, is instead of putting it on what is my left, you put it on the right side. Okay? The shorter one is added first. And this is where I'll show you how the reason I didn't cut those off, how I use it for a guide. I line it up, and because of the way it's pressed, it's going upward. Well, I fold it over just to make sure it lines up with the big triangle underneath because this is where I want it to line up. But I don't need it to sew that direction. So I only use it as a guide to make sure I'm at the right length here, that I'm not too short or too long. If you were too short, you know, you can always fudge a little by giving it a little tug. If you're too long, you've got to get... Um, you either have to adjust a seam or kind of work it in a little bit. I try to... Okay, when I'm sewing, I'm crossing my X's. I'm holding my little piece down. You know your seam is, is good when you're exiting right off of that section yet. This time, I will trim those. Okay, and press to the dark, and I'll sew the other one on the same way. Now, as you can see, I have the block laid out at an angle, so once my sections are done, these will be sewn to here, this will be sewn to here. What I want to do real quick is sew um, one little section here to give you a better idea of what you're going to be doing. Because I think after we get going, you get the gist of it. So I have that one sewn down. Over here, I again, I need to add a triangle. I don't have the big color triangle to add, just the white background. So I'm going to tip that over. You want to make sure that it's going to follow the same track as your other background pieces, because it's real easy to sew it at the wrong and all, all of a sudden you look and you go, that's not going to fit because this block looks strange. It's not actually a square. It's not a triangle. It just is a strange shape. But it's what we need for the center of our block. Okay, I think I... Nope, I am stitching. I am not stitching. It's just looking a little funny. Okay, check to make sure that you're about a seam allowance. Overhang. I've got extra loops on, on this particular. Let's do this. There, it wasn't stitching quite right. Not sure exactly why, but sometimes when I get in a hurry, I get things stitched in the wrong way. And that looks much better. Double check that I've got it the right amount of overhang because you don't want this to line up right on that edge. It won't work. It's got to have basically a seam allowance difference. Keep it lined up on, on me. Cross my X's as I'm coming across. Go. And give it a press. So this is kind of your odd shape that you have. And then you go ahead and you sew one of the background triangles to it.
Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump because I know now you can mimic the other side. You'll repeat this and then you'll sew these together. And let actually they'll sew this way. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll do that real quick so that you have an idea. Because I would like to show you the very last step and make sure that you match up your sections. checking that I have just the right amount of uh, overhang and that my needle crosses that right place. Now we're going to sew our two sections together and the dark blue will go on the background. The background will extend You can pin that center if they tend to slip on you. Sometimes mine do, so then I have to stop and, and pin it. This time I was very lucky it didn't. Okay, now that you have your center section all put together, and this time it's going to want to press a little both ways. But you have your center all put together. And you can see I haven't cut off all my dog ears, but I will. The important thing now is, is you have to match up this intersection. Let me find a pin. You need to match up this intersection right here, that point, with this point right there. That's what we need to make it look right. So once again, I stick a pin in right where my threads cross. I make sure that it's in that point. I go into this point. I line up straight across that section, slip in a pin close and pull that one out. And I will do it to both sides because like I said, I want to make sure that those match up. And I can already tell that I've already got a little bit of difference in, the, in how they line up. Because you can see this one here is not going to line up exactly the same as the other. Which is okay because I still have plenty of seam allowance there. So when I do sew those two, I line up that dog ear that I haven't taken off yet and make sure that those are the same. But he wants to fold that way, but I've already checked. So when I'm done, I will trim them off. So I go through, I do my quarter inch seam. I can see my blue square doesn't want to line up quite right with my white on this particular one. So I know I have to sew straight from that one to this one. So it looks like my white one is basically on my quarter inch and my blue one, for whatever reason, maybe I took too big a seam on the other side, is a little bit shorter, but it's laying nice and flat. I need to line up the other side again, double check that I've got enough, and I do. And I come off the other side. And 
give it a quick press. There we go, because our goal was is to get this intersection to line up nice and pretty. And this one here, even though my white and navy is lined up, I got a little extra white over here. But visually, it still works. But this is our goal, is right there, is to get all those intersections. So once you have that one done, add the other one. And then you have your beautiful block to make your quilt called Pick Nick. So I hope you've enjoyed watching our video. We do carry the thangle in the store and we have the pattern available for you. And that you like using the new technique of using a thangle to make your half square triangles. Check us out at junctionfabric.com and like us on Facebook. Thank you again for watching.